Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to video two in the repair dash restoration of this um, Zenith Transoceanic D7000Y. Now, when I left off last, I said I was going to do checking of the uh, supply lines. I've done that and I decided to also check the back of this uh, rotating um, indicator because I know there's some electrolytic capacitors in there. I replaced those in the uh, Transoceanic uh, 3000, the first one I did, and found that uh, one of the capacitors was actually cutting the audio off completely. So I figured I'd check this one out as well. Now, the way to take this out is actually the uh, same as the other one, really. There's, there's a side plate here that you remove by removing the back screws and one in the bottom. This tube then comes out and you have access to it. And again, I've used the trick of using um, Prestic on the um, dial cord connections over here. So I don't have to, you know, redial, restring the whole thing. And it works very well. What I found was those, there were three capacitors in there. I did replace them, but they were actually all pretty good. They were in perfect condition, actually. So that gave me a little bit of uh, encouragement to make the next decision, which was the back of this guy over here. There are actually three electrolytics in the back there. And that is, it's not a problem to remove the panel. It's actually quite easy. You just remove that screw down there and that screw in there. And this whole panel comes out. However, it doesn't come out without a fight. You've got to be very, very careful because there's an incredible amount of wiring in the back here, point to point wiring. It's all very, very tight in there. So if you're not careful, you're going to do some serious damage. And the question then is, do I or don't I? Well, I made the, uh, <laughs> well, cowardly decision of not doing it. And the reason is, I'm afraid that if something breaks loose or some connection shorts, I'm going to create all health myself without much gain. And the reason is pretty simple. The reason is that this thing is actually receiving very, very well now. I did a lot of cleaning of the uh, contact switches. I replaced those caps. I have done no alignment whatsoever. And I want to show you what we get on here. That's on FM. Tone control has been cleaned. It still needs another bit of spray. That's AFC and uh, direct tuning. You can see that it's working. If I take it off AFC, it sort of goes off station. The minute I put AFC on, it jumps right back. So that's working well. I haven't even got the antenna on. That was the antenna. That was with the antenna on the wrong clip at the back. So that's working very well. Let's try the um, AM and shortwave bands. Just put in the mini whip. Change the antenna at the back to long wave and um, medium wave. Remember this, well, just so you know, this is the wrong time of day for AM, but that is long wave. That is actually BBC 4, BBC Radio 4, South of England, which I shouldn't get at all during the day, but I am getting something here. That's my Porto Santo beacon. Let's go to broadcast band. Okay, just so you know, I've got a um, <laughs> internet uh, booster thing, power line internet uh, switch. I've got to get that off because then we'll get some decent broadband. Give me a second. Okay, I've disconnected the uh, internet um, 
extender thing, the power line extender. And believe me, it makes one hell of a difference to me. You've got to disconnect both of them, both the, the transmitter, the one that's near the router and the one that's receiving. That's Canary Islands. This is the only AM band we have in Madeira. Let's try shortwave. And again, I've got to change the antenna to the shortwave one. It's time of day, it's mid midday. Okay, so as is obvious, reception isn't bad. I've done no alignment whatsoever. But I think something has um, really come together, and I think it's got to do with the cleaning of the um, of the switches. That's usually the first thing you need to do. There are a lot of switches on there. Everything has got to be making perfect contact or things will go wrong. The other thing I did was I tested the voltages. There are those test voltages that you need to test on here. I tested the AM setting and I tested the FM setting. On AM, they're actually pretty close. On FM, they're actually a little bit high, but I think that's pretty normal. It might actually have to do with the type of meter that I'm using. You know, if you use a uh, low impedance meter, the voltage levels will, will be lower. So again, I'm happy with that. The other thing that I found that I'd done wrong is I'd actually wound this the wrong way around. This thing was uh, turning in the opposite direction to the one it should have done. And the reason is I had this thing in the opposite direction. So that's been corrected as well. Somebody obviously was in here because now there are two springs on here rather than one. But um, I'll leave that there for now. And it's now tuning correctly. In other words, when I rotate counterclockwise, it tunes down and so on and so forth. So that is working OK now. When checking for voltages, I actually went to the uh, transistor pins and tested at the pins. So I tested the voltages according to the schematic. Where are the other two? There's two down there. One's the mixer, one's the oscillator. And I tested, I checked all the voltages there. They seem to be within, well, acceptable uh, ranges of what the schematic says. Again, you can't be too picky with this. These seem to be original. Uh, they're not... Um, they are sort of old transistors, but they're working pretty well. And these two down here that are supposed to be a matched pair, well, I checked for gain, or rather, I checked for, yeah, ch checked for gain and, um, and forward voltage. They're pretty equally matched. I didn't put them on a signal tracer, so I didn't go that far. But the one thing I do know is the audio on this thing is perfect. So I'm not too worried about that. So it seems that everything is more or less in order now, but obviously this needs a really good alignment. I know that I noticed, especially on AM, that um, it seems to be a bit off. So I'm going to do an, uh, an IF alignment first on the AM and see if that's far off or not. That so sort of gives us an indication of where we are. It's a pretty usual setup for the uh, IF alignment of the AM. You set it to 455 kilohertz. Amplitude is at practically minimum, and there is a tone, an AM modulated tone, 30%, 1 kilohertz coming out of there. So we've got our signal coming through. It comes out of the signal generator into the switch attenuator. This is to reduce the amplitude of the signal because it's still too hot for the, uh, for the injection point. At the moment, I've got 18, 30, what is it? 18 and 
kind of, I can't even read what uh, what markings these are, but about 20 something dB of attenuation. It then comes out here and they tell you to inject it into test point five. I've got ground to chassis. Test point five is one of those points that you measure the voltages on. One, two, three, four, five. Because it's going through the uh, switch attenuator, it's coupled through a capacitor already. They tell us to make sure that the um, bandwidth switch is on sharp, which it is, and that the manual gain control is off. And then I've got the speaker coming out here. Speaker signal goes into my uh, dummy load selector here. I can have speaker or dummy. I've also got these two going off to the AC uh, voltmeter so I can measure the amplitude at the output and I can also just see what the signal looks like on the scope. So I think we're ready to go and if I give it some volume we can hear it and it's looking pretty jagged and again according to service manual the coils you adjust, the IF uh, transformers you adjust are that one there, that one there and then that one there, that one there. And then there's there are two here stacked. It's the inner one there. And there's another two stacked here. It's the inner one there. Those are your one, two, three, four, five, six adjustments that you need to make peaking at uh, 455 kilohertz. So let me uh, keep an eye on the meter and get cracking. Okay, we're good to go. Let's give it a try. Oh, that didn't need much. A little bit better. Now, these two guys. Now, it might move when I lift this, but should be okay. These guys seem to be okay. Okay, let's try this guy. Let's see. Nope. It's about the same. And this one. That's about it. Well, the IF alignment is done. Not much change, actually. Not much change at all. So this was fairly well aligned as it was. That's fine. This uh, next adjustment is actually quite simple. It's to zero beat the BFO, make sure the BFO is set properly. So we send a 455 kilohertz signal and we switch on the BFO and they tell us to set it to the middle. So I've set it perfectly vert vertical and you can hear it. And what you should be hearing is actually this, nothing, zero beat, okay? So we set it to the middle there. The appropriate slug in here, you can hear it change already. It's very sensitive. 
but I'm listening to it and it's going the wrong way. There we go, that's zero beat. If I go further, it starts picking up again. So I need to make sure I leave it where it's totally silent. As I take it out, it shifts a little bit. There we go, that one's done. Now, I don't know how close or how off the um, RF alignment is. I'll probably have to do it, but I'm just gonna check quickly. I've got the uh, signal generator set to 600 kilohertz. It's on broadcast band, so medium wave, yep. There's 600. Hmm. It's just a little bit off. Let me try at the top, uh, 1600. It's just a little bit off. I'm not actually connecting uh, the signal to the antenna. I've just got a loop of wire on the end there. So it's coupling through the ferrite core, the ferrite antenna. Let me try long wave, uh, let's say 350 kilohertz. 350 on the signal generator. Put it on long wave. There's 350. It's pretty close. What about short wave? Let's try 3 megahertz. I don't know if I'll pick it up now. I might have to put a wire there. Hmm, I can pick it up, it's a little bit off. Okay, so this all needs an RF alignment. I want to get this thing really close. So I'm going to finish this video for now. I'm going to study the service manual a little bit more and uh, make sure there aren't any tricks or surprises involved. Make sure those cores are visible. Some of them are from the outside, some from the inside. I know that most of them, in fact, I think all of them, you should do it. You should do the RF alignment when this thing is in the chassis, in the actual case, because the case is a whole metal box. And uh, if you do the alignment outside it, out, outside of it like it is here, you might actually be off. When you put it back in, the capacitance between certain points and the actual case will throw the alignment off. And this uh, little, where is it? This, um, these cores, these coils over here are all done with this, it's a little hex. And then there's a thin section, which has been ground down. And the reason for that is that you can actually put it into the back. You put it in on the opposite side of this from the back and it goes through it and comes to this front one here. Okay. So it actually goes all the way through the first core, which is the first slug, and then it goes to the back end, which has got another slug. I'm not turning it, I'm just fitting it. And then you pull it back out through the front one. This was a, a subscriber that sent me this, because it's always a pain to try and get to these front cores from the back, because you actually go through one core, which you don't want to adjust to get to the front one. So I'm going to study those, make sure that they're pretty similar to the, the 3000 uh, that I did. And I'll come back when I've got this ready to do the full RF alignment. And anything else that comes up, I'll report back to you then. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, if you want to uh, support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.